The Lord be with you. Welcome to this unique and wonderful Christmas Eve service, and we pray that this will be a blessing to you and to your family, and I would love for this to be a rich worship experience for you, wherever you are and however you are receiving this. But we have a few instructions that you'll need to know beforehand. We will be serving communion, so have your communion elements ready, bread, or crackers, wine, or juice. And perhaps for this Christmas Eve service, you want something extra special, even more than what you'd normally have on a Sunday morning. Also, we will be doing candle lighting, so you'll want to make sure each one there has a candle and a way to receive that light and to share that light with one another. Everything else that you're going to need for the service will be on the video. The words to all the music, the prompts for all the liturgy, all of that you will see. It will be provided for you. So perhaps you might need to take a moment now and pause the video and prepare these elements. And if you need to do that, please do so now and then come and join us for worship. The reading is from Isaiah, the 52nd chapter, verses 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns, listen. Your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy. For in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our Lord God.
Unto us is born this day a child, a son, to whom all authority has been given. He has been named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In the name of Jesus, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Help us to see and walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day, welcome the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Hear God's word from Isaiah, Isaiah 9, 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. The Gospel of the Lord. It's probably an understatement to say everything about 2020 was unexpected. Have you heard the saying that everyone five years ago got wrong the interview question, where do you see yourself in five years? Because none of us expected to be here. It was unexpected for us to have to cancel worship service. It was unexpected of us to have to minimize gathering together. It was unexpected of us to have to wear masks everywhere we go. Everything about this year has been unexpected. Even this video recording was unexpected. We had no idea we would have to do Christmas Eve this way. And as we've gone through this season of unexpected events over and over again. It, it disturbs us. It, it upsets us. It throws us off. And we feel just a little different. And we wonder, how are we going to get from this season of unexpected back to something that we could call normal? And perhaps things have changed forever. But as we have gone through this season of unexpected events in 2020, I'm not really sure it compares to the unexpected events of the first Christmas. Can you imagine what Mary and Joseph had to go through all of those unexpected moments for Mary to be told, you're going to have a child? Well, that's impossible. How can I have a child? 
And for Joseph to be told, you're going to be responsible for raising Messiah. How am I supposed to do that? And then the idea that this tax will be imposed, and now they have to travel with all of this also upon them. Imagine that unexpected journey. Ninety miles on foot with a nine-month pregnant woman. And they're going to a place where they might not know anyone. And when they show up, and she's about to deliver, there's no room in the inn. And now, here they are at this very crucial moment at the birth of this child, their first child, a son, the Messiah of the world, and they're all alone. There's no family, there's no friends, there's no midwife. This is up to Joseph. Can you imagine the pressure? And then to have this child delivered and come into the world. And here they are in the midst of this unexpected moment. But I believe what happens in these unexpected moments is God moves us from mystery to majesty. And I think that's exactly what happened for Mary and Joseph. They were moved from this moment of mystery. What's going to happen? How is this going to happen? To majesty. Mary held majesty in her arms. Joseph, a common carpenter, raised a king. The shepherds had a front row seat to the majestic announcement and arrival of the birth of Christ, their Savior. God moved them all from mystery to majesty. And I believe in this Christmas season, in 2020, He is going to move all of us from mystery to majesty. And I know that all of you are dealing with many challenges in this mystery, in these unknowns, in this unexpected. I can think of my own children having to deal with this. My oldest daughter with two young kids who are now learning at home while she's working at home, while her husband's working at home. How do I do this? And my youngest daughter expecting her first child and working at home. How do I do this? All of these mysteries, all of these challenges. Each one of you, you have your own challenges of mystery. How am I going to continue to connect with my family and my friends? How am I going to continue to work if that's difficult? How am I going to continue to participate in the life of this church or in the life of the community? All of these mysteries you're dealing with day in and day out. But I believe if we take an honest look at our lives in 2020, we can all recount ways in which we have all moved from mystery to majesty. So what I'd like to encourage you to do is to count your blessings. Think about the ways in which you have moved from mystery of 2020 to all of these unknowns to majesty. Because I think that's what happens at Christmas season. In the midst of our mystery, God shows up and leads us to majesty, and we are blessed. We are blessed by the ways in which God has given us his love, his forgiveness, his presence, his joy, his peace. Peace even in times of unexpected uncertainty. And we have moved from mystery to majesty. So what I'd like to encourage all of you to do, maybe right after this worship service, right after this video recording, or especially sometime in this Christmas season, I want you to talk as a family, talk among yourselves, 
and count your blessings. How have you been blessed? Where has God blessed you in this time of mystery and led you to majesty? God has blessed me. Kathy Ann and I were having our morning coffee the other day. Thanksgiving time, it was probably Friday or Saturday. And she says to me, what are you thankful for most? And I said, love. I am loved. And I have the opportunity to love others. And to me, that is the richest blessing that we can have. So I'd like for you to have those conversations. Turn to one another and say, how have you been blessed? The Lord has blessed me in this way. And then we will understand how God has moved all of us from mystery to majesty. So let us recount, especially that our generous and gracious God has moved us from mystery to majesty, and the greatest blessing is this, that he has given us a Savior. And we celebrate that at Christmas, the birth of Jesus. Amen. Gathered with all who seek the Christ child, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. Wonderful counselor, on this holy night, your church throughout the world celebrates the word of God being born among us. Fill your church with a zeal for sharing your love and grace with those around us. Into our darkness, Emmanuel, Prince of Peace, your grace has appeared and brings salvation to all. Work through your people to bring healing to individuals and nations divided by violence. We offer our voices and our lives to speak to the leaders of the nations so that they will always be reminded of the need to work toward peace. Into our darkness, Emmanuel. Shine your light of hope. Mighty God of mercy, you came among us as a vulnerable infant. We offer our lives and our resources as your people to help those who are vulnerable in our community, those without homes or caregivers, those who grieve, those who are hungry, and those who are ill. We lift before you those we know who have special needs this week, either aloud or silently now. Into our darkness, Emmanuel. Shine your light of hope. Gracious God, 
We praise you for gathering us tonight to worship in his holy splendor. Direct our worship, fellowship, and service to the, so that our lives and Christian witness may be pleasing to you. Into our darkness, Emmanuel. Shine your light of hope. Everlasting God, your steadfast love never ends. Thank you for revealing your faithfulness and love to, to us through the saints of every time and every place. Into our darkness, Emmanuel. Shine your light of hope. Please join me in praying. You hear the cries of our hearts, O Lord. Fill us with hopeful expectation that in each day and hour we may love and serve our neighbors. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Take this opportunity to share the peace with those with whom you are gathered now.
Please join me in praying. Good, Good and loving God, God we, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. You have blessed us with your gifts. May we be a blessing for others. With the trees of the field, with all earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Please take this opportunity now to share communion among yourselves.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Let us pray. Emmanuel, God with us, you grace us with life and breath and give us bread for the journey. Send us out in service to the world that you love, telling the amazing news of your coming to be Savior and Lord of all. Amen. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. O God, let us worship the Lord. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. When the son is being in him life, and the light is the light of all people. Today Christ is born, today salvation has appeared. Let us share this light with the world.
Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy. Grace from God's own heart, peace from the child in the manger, and strength from the spirit of life are yours today and forever. Go in peace. Be God's love and light for the world.